little bit more paint though to it. Just kind of use it as a binder. Using hands is sometimes a little bit easier. Uh, you see that clarified butter over there? Uh, not too clarified right now. Uh, I hit there's, up. there's one in there. Perfect. Chef's grabbing the clarified butter right now. Clarified butter. All I'm doing is kind of portioning these out. About two ounces is what we serve at the club. You can portion them out any size you want. Okay. We're going to go there. Now, Chef, how do you make clarified butter? What's the process like on that? Oh, so the next thing is, is we are going to dip. I don't know if you guys want to know this, but we are going to dip uh, the crab cakes in clarified butter and use that one for flavor. Mostly, okay. roll those in there, nice and healthy. It's gonna help the panko stick to the crab cake. Okay. And then from there, kind of just pack it in there, let it absorb. And then I form them into. A little cake. Okay. Got a bunch already made right over, right over here. Hot pan. Let that butter go. Put it over here. Perfect. And again, clarified butter. You need to use a lot of it to sear these in. And while we are waiting for that to heat up, I'm going to start our trout for the next one. Kind of speed things up a little bit. We're going to smoke this. Just a little bit of olive oil. And I've got a homemade smoker here. <laughs> that chef's homemade smoker there. thing is scorching hot, so it's got uh, wood chips and some charcoal in there. Like I said, wood chips from the two by fours up in the attic. This thing is extremely hot, so just trying not to. Uh, the perks. Perfect. Nice chef there. So you got your clarified butter here, warming up nicely. Anyways, for today's class as well, we're going to do a little bit of a beer pairing. Uh, we've So far, we've done some liquor. We've done some wine. Love wine. Wine's always good. Uh, just grape juice, right? Uh, but today we're doing beer. But chef's, uh, he's back. He's ready to go. Nice throwing those crab cakes on that nice clarified butter. Nice and hot. Not too hot. You can do four of them. Let them turn down. While these are searing, I want to make a remoulade that 
I don't necessarily serve here at the club, but it goes very well with these crab cakes. Really easy to do. Anchovies, my favorite. I love anchovies. Cornichons. Red onion, shallots. Roasted peppers. Aioli that we made for the crab cakes. And then fresh tarragon. We're gonna mix this up. Perfect. A little mixing action here. There we go. Now, Chef's turning the crab cakes here. A little salt and pepper. All right. Oh. Fresh squeezed lemon goes in this. Mix all that up. Also add a little bit of uh, sweetness, a little bit of sugar in there, just kind of give it some flavor. And that would be my sauce for the uh, crab cakes, which are just about ready to be done. So we are going to lay it ahead. A little sauce on there. I've got some. Uh, Blood oranges, I'm going to add to it. Some really special extra virgin olive oil. Salt, pepper. Fresh lemon juice. While we're waiting for the uh, crab cakes to finish, which they're just about done, pull them out of that butter that's in heavily saturated in crab. That. And there you have our crab cakes we do here at the club. Nice. All righty. So, anyways. We said we'd pair some beer, and I think beer is delicious. It's, it's one of those beautiful things in life. You know, it's bubbly, it's fresh. Uh, so we're having the crab cakes here today. Grabbing the beer now um, with crab cakes. Yeah, I have beer with crab cakes every now and then, but always I always go with the lighter style, especially Chef's Crab Cakes. You know, they're uh, 
they're light. They're not overly rich or heavy, but you know, they're they're, they're a lighter style crab cake. I've had them where they have uh, just a ton of filler and not a ton of crab, um, and these are exact opposite. They're predominantly crab. Um, but anyways, let's try it out with the beer. What do we say? So, anyways, my whole thing is, you know, you got to work with what you got at home. Some people don't have beer bottle openers. It happens. I, I've been that guy. So, anyways, you're gonna want to get a, a knife or maybe something safer, a spoon. And you tuck it underneath here, and you give it a little, little bit of that twisting action there. You see, and pops right off. So, woo! Oh, it's a good knife. <laughs> All righty, we're gonna try it together. Make sure it's good. Beer is fresh. Always make sure your beer is fresh. Beer does have an expiration date. Um, you know, you just kind of gotta wing it sometimes. Hope for the best, right? Oh, there's no utensils. But we'll try it anyways. <laughs> oh, you know, that handy dandy knife. No. <laughs> no, I'll said don't do that. Perfect. All righty, we're going to try it. Noel, you want to try it as well? Well, of course. <laughs> nice. Let's see, chest remoulade, got a blood orange. Wow. And anchovies work really well in that sauce. That is good. Huh? Oh. Anchovies are great. Where's my beer? Well, hey, we're uh, <laughs> we're still tasting, right? So that's it. That's a terrible pairing. I'll, I'll make sure to finish this beer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it actually, it works really well. Again, it just it's light. It cleanses your palate, gets you ready for the next bite. Um, that's how I like to pair. Some people like to, you know, you can contrast or complement. I think this is kind of contrasting, right? You get. A little bit more acid here. Uh, let's see. I want to try. Oh man, I'm. Let me tell you, it's, it's pretty solid. We're gonna get some to chef to make sure he's well fed. Um, see if he likes the pairing, and we'll, we'll hear from him. Chef, you want to go on the next one? Oh, nice, perfect. Yeah. We're actually moving on to the next one. So you got some smoked trout for a chef. So smoked trout came off. The right. best way to tell that this stuff is done, uh, skin should come off really easy. I always cook it skin side up. And look at that, skin comes right off. Trout is done. Okay. And what I've made ahead of time, people might wonder about this, but once you try it, it's really good. I, uh, I made an onion puree for it, okay? Who took my forks? I have some over here. I'm doing an onion, is there a spoon thing? Yeah, that's, uh, they're both over. Oh, you all right? Hope you all are laughing. Um, <laughs> so onion puree, what I've done is slowly cook some onions, really slow, really thinly sliced. You don't want to caramelize them at all. Once they're cooked through, all should stay white. Add some sherry vinegar just to absorb it, and I pureed it. Very, very simple. And it does not taste like onions whatsoever. So, what I'm going to be doing is just putting a little bit of onion puree right down there. I've also cooked off some shallots. And again, shallots, port wine, some sugar, red wine, and red wine vinegar fresh thyme and just cooked it down until it's almost like a uh, little bit of a jelly, uh, nice and thick. Nice color on the onions. Right. We're going to uh, plate the trout which this is probably one of my all-time favorite dishes. Very simple, but packed with flavor. I mean packed. You got the smokiness of the fish. You got the robust flavor of the onions, and then the sweetness of the shallots. Like I said, one of my all-time favorite dishes. And you could do a lot of other things with this. Add some remoulade on there if you wanted. You know, just to kind of, if you didn't like the onions, you could add that to it. You can add some citrus to it. You could add herbs, oil. 
And the last thing I'm going to do is just top everything off with some more onion, you know, such as chives. Uh, right there. Again, nice flavors there. Beautiful. Getting a nice smoke on it is, is probably one of the most, and it's really quick, very quick. You want to pair talk beer? Yeah, absolutely. All righty. So uh, we're going back to pairing, right? Because, uh, you know, alcohol is just the lifeblood during this quarantine. But let's chat about some beer. I'm going to grab a fresh beer. If you keep your beer cold. It's always better that way. You can have it warm. But, you know, I'm not here to cold. Um, let's see. So it's got some smoke to it. That's always fun. Now, there we go. Let's head on over. Things with smoke, you don't want to have an overly massive beer. You don't want to have anything that's crazy. Um, you want it to mesh well with the smoke. And smoke is one of those things that doesn't play well. Um, but what I did, sorry, no, I know I'm over here pointing the knife. But I was like, oh. <laughs> um, again, you don't have a bottle opener. Comes right off. It, it's so such a fun trick. You know, we all learned it in college. Those are the days. Those are the days. Uh, but actually, I'm going to have it with the uh, anchor porter. Yeah, you know, something that has that kind of caramely notes to it, but it's also got. Yeah, you know, the way they make the beer darker is they actually toast the grain, uh, and then they they let the flavors kind of steep out of there. Uh, so you get kind of a toastier note with that. You know, something to kind of complement the smoke that's in here. So you, you know, you'll get a little bit of that going in here. That's a good beer. Like All right, you know, we're gonna give it a try here. Get a little bit of that uh, remoulade, some of that onion. Uh, that onion smells great, by the way. Let's see here. Oh my God, it flipped over. <laughs> the smoky flavor is really coming through. Hey, it's present, it's not overly abundant. It's not, it's really well incorporated in that. But again, have something a little bit darker. You know, again, these grains have been toasted. You're gonna get some of that toast in there. You're gonna get some of those darker notes, but it's a compliment. <laughs> We're gonna let Chef try. He deserves. He deserves some good beer right now. Chef, you want to give this beer a taste? Let us know if it uh, if it pairs well in your opinion. What is it? Oh, uh, this is Anchor Porter. You know Anchor Steam. Really cool company in San Francisco. Um, it's actually just called Anchor Brewing Company, not Anchor Steam. It's very common misconception. I always thought it was Anchor Steam, but it's Anchor. What, what do you think, Chef? Brilliant. All right. Brilliant. Hey, compliments the smoke. Yeah. Life's decent, huh? <laughs> All righty. Uh, chef, on to the next course. What do you say? That's really nice. All righty. Let's see here. Oh, we got some chats. I'm so sorry, everyone. I have not been noticing the chat. Looks delicious. I want to try. Tell me. <laughs> nice. Standing by with first aid kit. Thank you, Leslie. <laughs> what? First aid kit. She thinks we're going to burn the place down. She's funny. <laughs> is, is that my knife? <laughs> All righty, Chef. What are we up to next? Next thing is the trolley. Mind if I hang out over here? Kinda. Yeah. Let's get in the hot pan ready. How's that uh, crab cake? How's that smoked trout? Smoked trout's hot. That's yeah. just a lot of flavor. Onion puree. Yeah. Onion puree is good too. I think the onion puree helps the. Uh... <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I mean, and I think what the onion puree does, it adds kind of a, a hardiness to it. A, I, I use the word savory a lot when. When I think about things that I really like, you know, and I love onions, and I feel like this kind of has a savoriness to it. Uh, it really works well with the shallots that you got. Did you pickle them? Is that considered pickling, or you just you just pork have... wine, red wine, red wine vinegar, yeah. sugar, thyme, all reduced down. Really? That is beautiful. I mean, that incorporates well. Um, I, I don't know. I really like the smoke on the trout. Again, it's present. It's not overly overpowering or everything, but it really complements the uh, the toastiness that you get in the uh, the porter, the porter. My goodness. over here in the wine ground again. But yeah, that's that's life. Chef's over here getting the petrolli pan ready. It's a massive pan. Um, yeah. Nice. Does, does anyone have questions? Oh yeah, sugar uh, makes it good. Check the chat. 
Yeah, let's. We're gonna check chat again, guys. So if you have any questions, just let us know. Sugar, the beer looks good. Yeah. Hey, Chris Lipner, how's it going? Let's see. Let's see here. All righty, Jeff, are you just about ready, my friend? Almost. Almost. We're getting there, gang. Oh, are your beer glasses chilled? You know, I we we didn't chill them. I'm very sorry. Um, but beer glasses should be chilled. Um, they shouldn't, they shouldn't, it depends on what you like, you know, and I always go back to what you like, you know, it, some people, they like their cores ice cold, I totally get it, you know, and, uh, uh Debbie Fournier said, will you make recipes available, Chef, will you be making the recipes available, putting them online, or, uh, sending them out? Yeah, I'm selling them for $200, <laughs> no. uh, yes, we posted one this morning for the crab cakes. Uh, we can post some more the, this afternoon. I can email them to uh, Jennifer and Noel. Uh, no problem. Nice. A lot of this just comes as I start making everything. Uh, but one of the first things I want to get before we get to the petroleum is we are going to be making the sauce for the petroleum. And uh, this morning I made a... Uh, a vegetable stock, and all I had in there was onions, carrots, celery, fennel, herbs. Uh, I put a couple, I, I put like a half a potato in there. Uh, I put some fresh ginger in it, some garlic, and some uh, shallots, and just steeped it for about two hours, strained it. And that's when I'm gonna be starting the sauce off uh, for the petroleum. I am not making a vegetarian smoothie, as some of you might think I'm gonna be doing. But uh, this is all green herbs, spinach, arugula, and vegetable stock pureed together. We're going to try and draw as much chlorophyll out, out of the, of the uh, greens as possible to kind of give it this deep, dark color. And uh, if you wanted to chill it down and add some ice, you could probably drink it in the morning as a smoothie, and it would probably be a smoothie on steroids for you. So uh, we're going get, to get started with that. I got some warm vegetable stock going in my uh, blender. Okay. You might want to turn your volumes down because this is going to get loud in here. Uh, I'm going to be putting some asparagus on the uh, petroleum. I saved some of the stems. I'm going to be throwing that in the vegetable stock. Spinach. I'm gonna start this up a little bit. All right, it's gonna get loud. I might just mute it. Hold on, Chef. All right. Blender, do the work. There's more spinach. More spinach. More spinach. Fresh basil. You rotate between speeds. I'm not sure if I did, but I'm adding arugula in there also. Right 
Perfect. So Chef just added some salt and pepper. That's it. All righty. Okay. What we're going to do next, we are going to sear our petroli. All righty. We're going to move right on over to the grill. I got some nice, beautiful, fresh pieces of petroli today, right, Noel? Yes, they do. All right. right now, all I've got is a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of clarified butter for flavor. Okay. We are going to season the petroli. And there's a trick to doing petroli. You don't want to touch it till it's nice and golden brown. We're just going to leave it alone, okay? Season. And on white fish, I usually don't put any pepper in it because it tends to uh, look speckled on a plate and it just always bothers me. So I, I never season white fish with pepper. Personal preference. You want it? Go ahead. Going to be warming up some asparagus pips that I told you guys uh, was heating up. A little bit of clarified butter, olive oil, salt, and pepper. Usually on this, you can start to see the goldenness of the petroleum coming through. Okay. Nice color to it. Nice color to it. Nice color to it. Let that cook real quick. <laughs> All righty. Oh, we got a question. Oh, no, it's, it's a happy birthday, Grant. We're going to be uh, starting to uh, plate. So I want this to go out really quick. Right now, I've got a ladle full, full of our sauce, a little vegetable sauce that we got. Nice green color. That was our ghost friend. I don't know where that came from, but there was a knock on the wall there. I don't know who it was from. <laughs> nice. And there was a question, Chef. Sorry, everyone. Let me pull that up. The trolley takes real quick. As you can see, I'm already pulling it. Draining some of it off. What's the question? Uh, so there's two. Was there salt slash pepper added to the crab cakes? No. Well, that was a negative for that question. I did not add salt or pepper. I think the crab is salty enough. 
I usually do not add any because I'm using 100% Dungeonous crab meat. Aioli yeah, uh, aioli's got some salt in there, and so no, I do not add any salt and pepper to it. What's the next question? Uh, the next question uh, is there a way to purchase clarified butter for home? Uh, yeah, it's overpriced, it's really simple to make, and that would just be my recommendation. If you, if you, all you got to do with clarified butter, get a little pot put a pound of butter in it, slowly, and I mean slowly, cook it down. You'll start to see the milk solids come up to the top. All you gotta do is just skim it, okay? And if you wanna take it a next step further for the clarified butter, let some of it brown on the bottom a little bit. It'll give it that nice, nutty flavor of the butter. Perfect. You can't beat that flavor. Some of those clarified butters early in my chef years, I had guys, you know, buying clarified butter and it was like tasting oil. So I would not recommend uh, buying clarified butter. Take the extra step, do it yourself, and it'll store in your refrigerator for a couple months. So just my two cents. Or they also have salted or unsalted? Unsalted. Unsalted butter. Now, I hope, here's another thing with salted butters. I like to season my food, and when you start using salted butters, you've already got that extra added salt in there. So everything I buy here at the club and everything I do with butter is always unsalted. Let, let us do the flavorings for it. Awesome. Let's see. I got another one, Chef. Okay, so excited I learned the puree sauce trick for this. Oh, awesome. Uh, no, there's a second one here. Uh, can you use olive oil for the crab cakes instead of butter? Yes. To sear them in? Well, let's to see. sear the crab cakes? Kathleen Jackson. Was that to sear them or? Uh... You, yes, yes, you can use olive oil. Not a problem. Perfect. Wow. That was informative. All righty. So, what do we have here? Beautiful dish. You want a beer with this? Yeah. Hey, let's pair some beer. What do you guys say? Okay, perfect. That's already done, yeah? Alrighty, so let's go back to our, our no, mini fridge here. Yet. It's not done? Okay. It's going to add a couple of things, but we're going to have some beer for Come on. Got a lot of veggies. I love veggies. Okay, this and, you know, I, I think a lot of people hate on this beer because uh, it's got a, a funny rim. <laughs> Got, it's got rocky mountains on it, and when they become blue, <laughs> it's ready to drink. What um, we're doing on this is just adding a little bit of uh, nice. garnish. Perfect. So you drinking it. whenever a uh, silver bullet, you got it. So whenever a uh, chef says, "All you do, you drink." What? It, it can be, you know. <laughs> whenever chef says what? <laughs> no, nothing, chef. Whenever um, I say shotgun, everyone. <laughs> hey, let's see. Let's see that flavor. Yeah, let's check it out here. So. Uh, you keep, uh, now, Chef, these radishes, are they pickled? Uh, yeah, those are pickled on radishes. Here? I've got the uh, asparagus tips on top. Of course, the sauce, uh, the vegetable sauce that you've got in there. Then I've just got some micro basil, a little bit of flouring mix on there, some fresh cilantro, some uh, leaves, some uh, fresh parsley leaves on there, and a little bit of arugula. Beautiful. Because I am a big fan of Arugula and seafood. The combinations go really well. Oh, hold on, I'm not done yet. Oh. <laughs> I got hungry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're going to pair with the course. Again, light fish, you need something. You could overpower it with the beer. I wouldn't do that. But again, it's personal preference. If you don't like this, you don't like that. It's it's all preference. If you want to have it with the salad, you're more than welcome to it. I think it might make it taste a little funny. Kind of like pennies almost. I feel like when you drink, um, you know, darker beers with light fish, like colored fish, it always it has a metallic -y taste to it. Same with red wine. Red wine, you have it with a white fish or, you know, any fish that's not red, salmon, snapper, blah, 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 tuna. Um, it, it gets this really metallic taste. I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, so we're going to pair it with the Coors Light today. So, again, something you can buy just about anywhere. Again, a light yeah, beer. Coors Light? The Silver Bullet. Oh, <laughs> Colorado Kool-Aid is probably the best name I've heard for it for a while. Well, 
But again, just something that doesn't overpower the fish. You know, this is a delicate fish, it's a white fish, and white fish are always, they're, they're more subtle with the flavor. It's present, but it's not overwhelming. So, um, light style beer. Let's see here. Is sauce similar to chimichurri? Hey, Chef, is the sauce very similar to chimichurri, the, uh, the green sauce here? Uh, no, it doesn't have the spiciness to it. There's uh, no onions in there. Um, it's a beautiful, simple sauce. It really is. Gorgeous. Wow, very simple. Let us know how it pairs up with that beer. So again, pairing it with Ford Light. It's nice, you know, it's, it's subtle, it's off. Coors Light is, uh, <laughs> makes people dance, you know. Uh, but again, it's a delicate fish. It's, the flavors are very delicate, and this beer is actually extremely light, so it's not going to overpower the fish. It, it works really well. But again, if, you know, Coors Light isn't your style, you know, maybe some Pilsner Gear Away, or uh, I guess you can have like a Bud Light. Maybe not a Budweiser, I tell you, it might be a little overpowered. But again, personal preference. It's up to you guys. Uh, you know, perfect pairings exist, but it's what some guy is saying versus some other guy. Drink what you like and enjoy. But uh, it works well, of course. <laughs> All righty, Jeff, are you ready for the next one? Yeah, he's ready. All righty, guys, so we're getting going to head on over. Looks we're like gonna, uh, we're going to do a seared ahi tuna real quick. We're going to make a little bit of a, yesterday when I was at the market, I saw all these little baby yeah. tomatoes, yeah. figured we would do something with them. Nice. In mini heirlooms or something? No. No. They look good. Just, uh, so what I've got here is some homemade blackening spice. All right. It's got chili, cumin, paprika, granulated garlic. We've got... Uh, some fresh thyme that's dried actually, and uh, a little bit of chili powder. All I'm doing is rolling the tuna in. This is going to be a cook sear, quick sear, not a cook sear, a quick sear. I've got a hot pan, a little grapeseed oil, and the best way to sear tuna really quick, you can kind of see where the tuna is being seared at. difficult. Let that cook a little bit on each side. This stuff came in fresh this morning, so you're going to see a nice bright red circle in there. And I like tuna rare, extremely rare, if not raw. This is just adding a nice crisp texture on the outside of it. A little bit of flavor. And turn that heat off. Let it kind of cook a little bit. Not sticking to the pan. In the meantime, I have got some half potato. Right. Beautiful looking olive oil. Got, uh, fresh basil, opal basil, chives. I'm going to do a uh, avocado here. Set the avocado off the side here. Here's the tuna. That's her. That's pretty good, Chef.
All righty. Um, chopsticks, nice. <laughs> All right, so we got our tomatoes, micro basil herbs. Nice little fresh tom tomato salad. We're going to put a little bit of some sherry vinegar in there. A couple splashes. Some fresh lemon. Pickled peppers. I'm sure you guys see these all over the place. We've got some pickled little teardrop peppers. Putting those in there, they're nice and sweet. Okay. And of course, some arugula. Get some salt and pepper. A little bit of salt and pepper. Needs a little more olive oil in there. Okay. Looks pretty good. Gonna plate that just right there. Absolutely. Tomatoes, peppers. And then for the uh, granddaddy of them all, we're going to slice up this tuna. You see how nice and colorful that is? Put that there. Alex taste. Yeah. California, you can't do anything without avocados. I entered a Zoom family cooking competition with my sister and her husband bet her that I would be doing avocado toast. <laughs> because I was from California. So just a little uh, information what people think of Californians and avocado. <laughs> Everything's with avocado. So I'm just making sure it's true to it. Um, as of right now, that's all we've got. You guys got some questions on some stuff. Um, if you're willing to answer. I'm also taking requests for our next class, um, which uh, I'm not sure if it's scheduled yet. We've got a couple sponsors uh, backing us. On some things, you know, uh, Coors Light and uh, some Pico Man <laughs> soy sauce and those kind of things. But, uh, um, but uh, yeah, anybody got any questions? Uh, please let uh, feel free to fire away. Nice. All right, I'm gonna open up the question. Oh, Erin O'Grady said yum. I agree. That's beautiful. What olive oil did you use, Chef? It is an imported olive oil that I've been buying through a company that I get. It's a cool little bottle. They sell it like this. Um, I was selling this in the gift shop uh, about a year ago, and we went through all of it, but we didn't sell any. <laughs> I don't know where it went. <laughs> no. Uh, Anyways, nice. so I quit putting them down. But these little things are really cool. Uh, anybody want some? It's an Italian uh, uh, from Cato uh, Rapulo, Rapulo olive oil. And what's your Nice. All right. Well, how did I pickle the peppers? I pickled the peppers in uh, rice wine vinegar, sugar, uh, distilled vinegar, peppercorns, bay leaves, and thyme. And I just steeped them in there for about uh, 10 minutes. 
and immediately sh uh, threw them in the walk-in to chill down. Nice. Who's Silver Bullet? Silver Bullet. No, Silver Bullet at the top end. Oh. <laughs> the uh, Coors Light. All right, Chef, I got, I got a question for Chef. Um, also, we're pairing the beer with an IPA because yeah, something with some heat needs something to counteract that. A lot of people say it's not good. Like, they're full of it. It's one of the best pairs out there. Uh, buffalo chicken wings, your really hot buffalo sauce with an IPA, outstanding. I mean, the astringency gets beat up by the hops, and it just they both kind of cancel each other out. Um, but anyways, I have a question for Chef. Now, Chef, you know, as a chef, you have an arsenal of spices. I mean, you have everything from, you know, uh, granulated garlic to salt. Uh, so if you had a pick, you know, if if you were to be one of the Spice Girls, who would you be? <laughs> I'd be Albert Spice. <laughs> oh, oh my God. I would probably, you know, probably salt. I mean, I'll be Old Spice. Old Spice. Dude. And Noel's going to be Old Spice. <laughs> oh, man. I, I had to ask. It's been, it's been killing me same, for years. You asked the same question last year. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't on camera. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, Salty Spice. So anyways, uh, the high tuna. <laughs> Ahi spice. <laughs> Talk about your beer and pairing. Uh, perfect. So anyways, this ahi tuna has a crust on it. The crust has uh, chili powder, Seth mentioned it a couple of times. Um, but anyway, something with heat, you need something with high hops, a lot of bitterness to it to really counteract that. Uh, when you have an IPA, something that has high hop levels, uh, that's the bitterness, really. Um, it kind of cancels out the heat, and I think I've said that already now. So, you want to give it a taste? Traced? Traced? I can't speak yeah, today. Oh, jeez. I've had like three sips. Come on. <laughs> uh, moment of truth. Which I, I'm using Longanitas because I can get it just about anywhere. It's, it's a really good idea. That's so nice. It's freaking amazing. It's pretty, amazing. It's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Really good. But yeah, Sculpin IPA oh, yeah. is pretty good. I do Sculpin. Very good. Nice. Which IPA? Oh, yeah, yeah. Lagunitas. Um, I would have done Sculpin. I just like Sculpin. It's, it's delicious. That's in is the bomb. Is it? Let me, let me try it out. I'm going to eat it with some of the stuff, not just the same. Anyways, uh, thanks everybody for coming today, taking their time out of their day to uh, spend with us. And uh, this is our microphone. <laughs> but uh, we appreciate everyone taking the time uh, out of their day. And uh, thank you. Thanks for enjoying us. And we hope you enjoyed the show. Yeah, thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. And uh, it's been a blast. Let's do it again sometime. All righty. Well, we're logging out. Hope you have fun. We're going to start eating now.